Another common thing that you might find yourself creating during this time are short quizzes or tests, or you might find you're trying to move your tests to online. So I'm gonna go through the testing process, kind of the whole thing. We'll make a test, we'll deploy it, we'll take it as a student, and then we'll, we'll go through the grading. So the first thing when making a test is, well, I should say testing, tests kind of have two major parts. And actually, if I go to our, a lot of the things I'm talking about today are available on our rapid online instruction page. So I'm just gonna click there briefly. And um, the, do, 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 I'm gonna go to online testing. And the testing that I'm gonna go through, there's two major steps. First, you're gonna build a test and add the questions to it, add the points, things like that. Then you're gonna make it available to students or what Blackboard calls deploying it. So these are some videos and resources for both of those steps. Um, and if it, oops, let me get back. And if it wasn't mentioned, um, cause I, I don't know if I was totally heard everything that Mike said, but there is a video inside this um, set of folders that can be copied into your course. And it goes over adding an assignment and um, adding a test as well. So, you know, if you're furiously taking notes, um, we're also recording this session, um, you know, there'll be opportunities to kind of go back and refresh. So anyway, back to the test. So step one, we've got to create it. So creating the, the test, you know, bank for lack of a better term is in your control panel under course tools. Scroll down to T for tests, test surveys and pools are here. And test means any graded exam of any kind. So exams, quizzes, it's all under tests. You're gonna click on tests and looks like Karen already had an exam in here. You may not have anything here but this is where you are going to build a test. So just as a refresher, I'm under course tools, test surveys and pools, tests. I'm gonna click on build test. I'm going to make a two question test today. One with a multiple choice question that Blackboard can grade automatically. And one, as an S, one will be an essay question that you as a faculty, if you added, would have to manually grade. So you can see how you know, automatic grading happens and manual grading would happen. So I'm gonna call this test um, relaxation test. Uh, so um, you do not have to type a description. You do not have to type instructions here. These are things that live with the test itself. These are things that would not change for the test no matter where, you de where or when you deployed it. So it might be like, this test is about relaxation. Um, it has multiple choice and essay. So that's true no matter where I deploy the test. So you can add some instructions there. Click submit. Now we're into our area of tests where we can create questions. So if you click on create questions, it's gonna give you lots of options. So if you go out to Blackboard main support, you can get the descriptions of all these different types of questions. The most common ones I think we'll probably see are multiple choice and essay. So we're gonna do one of each. So a multiple choice question. You do not have to type a question title, but you can type um, your question text is basically your question stem. So this could be what color is the sky? And then if you scroll down, you get your answers. So it will default to four answer options, but you can change that number of answer options. And you can start typing your options. So red, blue, green, orange. Now notice there's toggles here for selecting which of your answers is correct. That will help Blackboard automatically grade questions like multiple choice. So I'm gonna select blue as my correct answer and then I am going to submit. So now I've got one multiple choice question in my relaxation test. So I'm gonna add one more question to this test and that is um, an essay. So here I might say, um, how are you preparing to stay home for the next month? 
or whenever the case may be. So that's an open answer question. Um, so you don't have to enter any responses or whatever. You can simply select submit. So now I've got one multiple choice question and I have one essay question. Now, before we move away from our sort of test creation area and deploy it, the other thing you're gonna edit besides the questions themselves is the points. So Blackboard automatically gives 10 points per question. You can adjust this to whatever you like. So maybe I want my multiple choice question to just be one. So I clicked on the points, changed it, click submit. But I'm okay leaving my essay as 10. So this will be an 11 point quiz with two questions. I'll click okay. So now I'm under course tools, test surveys and pools, tests, and now I have a relaxation test. Um, it's not deployed yet in my class. That's what we're gonna do next. If you need to change the test at any point before deploying it, once you deploy it, you can't make changes, um, you can come back to your tests area and edit the test. You can edit the questions and you can also edit the title and description if you need to. So at this point, I am done creating a test. Now it's time to deploy. That's the big second step. So I'm going to go into my first week of materials for our online class. Maybe in addition to the reading reflection paper, now I want to deploy this quiz for them. So to deploy a quiz, same place. If you remember, we have deployed an, or we made an assignment under this assessments area. Here's a test option. It's going to say, oh, you want to deploy one of your tests. So we're going to click on test there. And now you've got your list of tests that are kind of banked in your, in your test area. And we've got this relaxation test that we made. Select that, click submit. Now this is the point. It's saying, okay, we know where you're going to deploy your, relax, your relaxation test. What do you want to allow students to do? What do you want to tell them? This is where we're in the test options area. This is where you can set time limits. You can set number of attempts. Um, whatever criteria you want surrounding those two questions. So you can give them, click the link above to start the test. You will have 30 minutes to complete it. Um, and I'll, I'll show you how to set it for 30 minutes. You don't have to do that. As I scroll down from the description, there are lots of options for you to choose from. Um, test by default aren't available. You can make them available when you're ready. You, if you're ready to make it available right away, you can click yes. Um, you can decide if they get more than one attempt. You can decide if they have to finish it all in one sitting or not. And I did say it was 30 minutes, so I'm going to set the timer. I'm going to say 30 minutes. If you set a timer and you have students with availability exceptions, if they have accommodations, this is where you can adjust that. So you can say add user or group, select a student that has um, needed accommodations. And the main things are, do they get more than one attempt or do they get maybe time and a half? So maybe the student's going to get 45 minutes for time and a half. You can also adjust when the test is available. Maybe they get an extra week. Again, there's a lot of options surrounding tests. I'm not going to show all of them, but you can read through these carefully and see if there's ones that you want working for you with your tests. Okay. Down here in show test results and feedback, this is an area I want to take a look at. Um, as you grade tests or as students submit them, you can decide when and how much you want students to be able to know about correct answers, about feedback, things like that that I can show you all the feedback, I'm going to check everything. I want students to be able to see all the answers as soon as they submit, but I could change it to certain due dates. So maybe you want to wait until after a test is due. Um, I want students to be able to see all the answers. I want them to be able to see my feedback when I grade that essay. And um, I want them to see anything they got wrong. So again, you can read through and decide what makes sense for your test. So I'm going to submit. So now I have a test. If I had made the test not available right now, I did decide, I clicked that button that made it available. You can toggle on the little gray arrow. That's how you can make available, make unavailable quickly if you need to. 
so now I've got this test here. I'm going to go in as a student and take the test. So I'm in my student preview. Going into my first week, I did my reflection paper. I am ready for a relaxation test, which maybe is kind of an oxymoron now that I'm thinking about it. So because I had the accommodations of 45 minutes that I changed, I get 45 minutes. Other students would get 30 minutes. Um, click begin. Now as the student, I can see my timer going down and I can see my two questions. I have a multiple choice. So I'm going to say sky is blue. And then I've got this essay, how preparing to stay home for the next month. Lots of chocolate. And so then when they're ready, they can say save and submit. They will get a notification that it went through. They can say OK. Now, because I said everything's available immediately, I'm actually able to see my grades on this test. If you had set it where they couldn't see anything yet, they might have to wait on this and go to their My Grades and see it later. I'll show you how to do that. Um, but I can see, oh, great. I got one out of one points for the automatically graded item. But this one has a little exclamation point here. It says this still needs grading. So Blackboard can't manu or automatically grade a, um, an essay type question. So that will be you as the faculty to go through and grade that. I'm going to click as a student, I'm going to click OK. I guess I'm going to wait until my um, instructor grades that. So I'm going to exit the preview as a student. And now let's go in as a faculty again. Time to grade that attempt on the, on the um, test. So ready to grade my first week's test as they came in. Go to my grade center, full grade center. That was the same place we went to grade the assignments. Just like the assignment, there's our reflection paper. When you make a test, it will also create a column in the grade book. If all of the questions are automatically graded, there would be points in here instead of this exclamation point. Blackboard would say, yep, here's the score. We graded everything. Because this test had an essay, there's an exclamation point there saying, you've still got to grade this. So as a faculty member, I'm gonna come in here click on that attempt, and I can see, oh, great, they got that first one right. Um, if you needed to adjust the points because of an argument or whatever, you can adjust points. But this is where I need to, I need to look at their essay. So I can see the answer that they provided here, and I can provide my feedback. I agree, nice work. Oops. And then, yeah, nine out of 10. So you can grade the manually graded items. If you want to give feedback to them on the test as a whole, nice job on your first Blackboard quiz or whatever, you can give feedback as a whole and then click grading notes or just for you, um, click submit. You've now graded, they got a 10 out of 11 because they got one on the multiple choice and nine on the essay. So as the last thing I'll show, about tests, let's go back in as a student and see how this looks in my grades. So I go to my grades and there's my relaxation test. Okay, I got 10 out of 11. If I click on this, I see that overall feedback. So that's the feedback that my instructor typed at the very bottom, sort of summarizing the quiz. And you may wanna only give feedback that way, that's up to you. If I want feedback on specific manually graded items, I click on that test, click into my grade, and then here's where I can see, oh great, I agree, nice work, nine out of 10 points. All right, so I'm gonna exit the preview. All right, so that is a little bit about um, assignments and tests. So I think at this point, I'll turn it over to Karen to go through um, some Blackboard Collaborate Ultra materials.